Becoming a developer is one of the best ways to land your dream job. Working on exciting technical challenges, working remotely from wherever you want, and earning a nice salary in the process. But if you've started on this journey as an aspiring developer, you might be thinking to yourself, like, what if I'm just not cut out to code? I mean, how do I actually know if I'm good enough to become a developer? Well, I'm gonna tell you exactly how to find out in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who's been coding for over 10 years and has helped lots of other people get professional level coding skills. And so if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this YouTube channel, I'd make videos teaching people how to become blockchain developers but I wanna make this video for lots of other people who might be aspiring programmers because this video and advice really applies to anybody who's trying to learn coding. And if you like what you see in this video today, then make sure you hit that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you wanna jump into one of the most exciting fields in tech right now with insane upside growth potential in the coming years, then I can show you how to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at adaptdiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's jump into this. So how do you know if you're cut out to be a developer or not? And this is a really common question that a lot of aspiring developers have, regardless of their talent or their intelligence. And there's lots of reasons why. You know, number one, coding is hard. The gap between somebody's skills who's just starting out and somebody who even just has two years of professional experience is insanely large. And that gap multiplies even further with somebody with many more years of experience. And so it's really easy to sit around and think like, oh man, these people are so much smarter than me and I don't really know how, if I have what it takes. In fact, I was just interfacing with a student the other day who was struggling with this same question and that's one of the reasons I wanna make this video because you know, it's, it's such a pervasive problem. I've struggled with it myself in my early days of coding and so I know how it feels. And so if you're new to this channel and you don't know anything about my story, you know, I'm a self-taught developer. I didn't go to school for computer science. I didn't go to a coding boot camp. In fact, I got rejected from coding boot camp. And I taught myself, you know, completely on my own with the help of a few mentors who helped me get started in the industry as a freelancer. And since then, you know, I scaled my coding income to multiple six figures in just a matter of a few years. And since went on to start this YouTube channel and became my life mission to help other people become developers, specifically in the blockchain field. And so everything I'm saying in this video today is really from my experience, you know, through myself, watching lots of other people make this transition while I was in the same position as you, and then also helping lots of other people from multiple different backgrounds get started as professional developers. And now one thing I really noticed in my early days was that there were a lot of people around me with different skill levels who were getting into coding, all right? And some people were insanely smart. These are people that I, I knew before I became a programmer and knew how bright they were. But some of these people, whenever they went in to go try coding out for themselves, it was just too hard. They didn't have the patience for it. They would try to work on code and then just completely bounce. And then a lot of these people never went on to even pursue coding because it was so challenging. And so that got me thinking like, hey, these people are really smart. What's the problem here? I mean, do I have what it takes? Not to mention that I was surrounded by lots of other people that I was networking with who just seemed to be light years beyond where I was, okay? But that brings me to my first point, okay? Especially if you're getting started out. You have to understand that you can't brute force your way into becoming a strong, effective developer. And neither could these people who I thought were a lot smarter than me who tried coding and just decided it wasn't for them. And because coding is hard and because you can't brute force your way through it, no matter how smart you are, that's a key. That intelligence is not necessarily a determining factor beyond a certain point on whether or not you're coding or not. And it's not the standard that you should use to determine whether you're cut out for it or not. And it's not just me that thinks this, okay? There's lots of evidence-based research that suggests this exact same conclusion. So one book that you can check out if you ever want to is a book called Peak uh, the Secrets of This New Science of Expertise, written by Anders Ericsson. So have you ever heard of the idea of the 10,000 hour rule for expertise? That originates from this book, okay? That idea became popularized by Malcolm Gladwell in his book, Outliers, went on, you know, to become a Macklemore song. It's very, you know, ingrained in our popular jargon now. But that's where this idea originates from. And one of the important conclusions in that book is that experts, people have put in a ton of time into their field were practically indistinguishable between one another in terms of their actual like intelligence level. Said a different way, 
Like their intelligence didn't make that big of a difference relative to the amount of deliberate practice they put into acquiring the skill. And one conclusion that you can draw from this is that basically people who have put in a bunch of time and practice, deliberate practice over and over and over again, past a certain point, these people will seem smarter than other people who have not put in that practice, but may even possess a higher amount of potential. And so this means two things. One, if you're looking around and seeing all these other people who just seem way farther along from you, and you're just thinking, oh, they're more talented than me, that they're smarter than me. Well, maybe not. Maybe they just put in the amount of time that they need in order to achieve those types of results. And then point number two is that's also good news for you because if you put in the time and the practice that's required to achieve that skill level, then you can achieve a similar level. And therefore your intelligence beyond a certain point doesn't really matter quite as much. Now, in terms of a certain point, that begs the question, how smart do you actually have to be? Now, pretty much every single way that you can measure intelligence, whether it's IQ or some other means, is going to basically distribute intelligence along a bell curve, where basically you have this curve where people who are the smartest are on the outside of this edge of the bell curve and the people who are the least smart are on this side of the bell curve. And then most people fall in this normal distribution kind of in the middle forming this bell, all right? Now, where do you have to be on this curve in order to actually become a developer? Most people think they have to be way up here. That's definitely not true. You don't have to be up here in order to become a developer and work in tech. Same thing, you don't even have to be down here. I would argue that a majority of people on this bell curve have the potential to do some type of fulfilling work as a technical developer inside of tech somewhere. Now, not everybody has the potential to become some really high level wizard that's gonna be doing massive architecture, leading teams and all that type of stuff that does take a certain level of talent, but you don't have to do that in order to have a type of fulfilling career in tech where you can remote work remotely and unlock you know, a dream job for you over the long term, especially compared to what you're doing now. And so for that reason, if most people have that potential, it's not even really worth thinking about this model. The whole point is here that you just have to be smart enough and that you have to be able to practice the skills that you need in order to become a developer. So the final question is, how do you personally know if you have all of that potential? Well, here's the real litmus test. And this is what I tell lots of other people, especially people that I help directly, the real litmus test is, do you like coding at all in the first place? This is the best general indicator that I can possibly find. Because if you like coding, okay, that's a pretty good indicator that you're smart enough to do it. And number two is that this enjoyment of the process will keep you coming back to coding because, you know, that's what you need. You have to put in deliberate practice like we saw before in order to get your skills up to that professional level. And finally, when it gets hard, because coding will get hard, the enjoyment of the process, or at least liking it enough, is what's going to keep you coming back. Let's say you run into challenges and you take a couple of days off to just clear your head. You never think that you hate coding, but then after a couple of days, you realize, oh, I actually do like this, especially well enough to turn it into a career. Then that fundamental enjoyment is what it takes to propel you on and carry you across the finish line. And so that's really it. So let me turn the question back to you. Do you like coding? Okay, let me know down in the comment section below. If so, I believe that you have what it takes to develop professional level coding skills that can be used somewhere in tech as a professional developer. You know, trust me, I've seen people from all different types of backgrounds get into this field. Some people had really advanced, sophisticated education in high level fields like physics or engineering. And some people were just normal people without much education um, who liked doing it, who were previously working at coffee shops, grocery stores, anything like that. It's totally possible. You just have to find out if it's for you and do you like it. And if you're watching this video, there's a good chance that you do. And so if you want to continue down that journey, then make sure you subscribe to this channel. Smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. You're going to see a lot more videos just like this helping sustain you on your coding journey so that you can carry you across the finish line. And if you want to jump into one of the most exciting fields in tech, position for insane upside growth potential in the coming years, then how can you get started today? You know, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step or hey, maybe you want to take a massive shortcut entirely, I actually become a blockchain master step-by-step -step to finish over at adaptdiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Adaptive